Can you tell me a little bit about how the exhibition started? What were the kind of first ideas that came to mind when we offered you the exhibition here? The first thing I did was ask for floor plans. I then began doodling and coming up with various possibilities. And I think from the start I've seen this project as very much about a, a layering of dialogues, a dialogue between the work and the spaces, a dialogue between the team and myself, a dialogue within the works, a dialogue with regard to materials, a dialogue certainly with regard to the world of interiors as a kind of print dialogue. I think I was from the start keen to bring in the gallery itself as a kind of by proxy participant. The first thing that struck me when we started working was that you had actually exhibited here in 1972. Perhaps we could talk a little bit about the work enough tyranny because in this exhibition we've decided 44 years later to restage the work in exactly the same West Gallery. The work stays the same but the context in which the work is seen changes and therefore the work changes. Mm -hmm. because the reading of the work changes. I've been thinking about the re-presentation um, of Enough Tyranny. I've been wondering whether it's actually easier for your public to understand or to, or to enjoy or to acknowledge what is in the West Gallery now than they would have done 44 years ago when I think that way of working was still so atypical mm -hmm. or so radical or so alien. I mean, I remember a letter from the Arts Council asking me what size van would be needed for the collection of the paintings to be exhibited. <laughs> so uh, they, ex they expected something quite different. I think they probably <laughs> did, yeah. They certainly didn't expect uh, live fish, which I actually brought in myself in buckets on a bus from Harrods. But I think that's a kind of metaphor of how visual practice invariably, I think, stretches boundaries, is it not? Mm -hmm. And I like to think it's happening in the East Gallery. I remember as we were installing, Lizzie very early on said, it's lovely to see the windows again. So given we knew we would acknowledge the windows, it therefore meant that we were able to, um, to uh, curtain the windows. Mm -hmm. And also it meant that we could, I suppose in terms of a footfall, we could, we could conclude the walkthrough um, of the four galleries with a, uh, a photographic reference to the uh, initial function of the building as a harbouring tea rooms. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, there's perhaps also another, another metaphor in terms of light, and that is that the West Gallery is, is self-lit. Mm -hmm. It's almost a night-like environment mm -hmm. because the windows have been so severely uh, filtered so that the lighting is actually electric rather than natural. So there's a sort of cycle here in terms of time whereby we begin with night light sensibility and we conclude with a daytime sensibility. And I think it's the axis of this gallery, the east to west axis, can therefore be acknowledged and self-referenced within the exhibition project. Perhaps we can talk a little bit about the, the sculpture in the North Gallery for MVDR, which comprises nine painted marble panels leaning against the North Wall. This piece was, has only been shown once on the occasion of uh, the Berlin Biennale and it, uh, it was a critique of, of Mies van der Rohe's attitude which is uh, rigorously dogmatic and uh, very fixed um, and uh, inhuman. And with the, this remarkable building of his in Berlin, the one concession he'd made to the rectilinear um, were these pillar-like units clad in a very organic material in a, in a quartz marble. And so I thought I'd qualify that by, in a way, decorating it, which of course would have been anathema to the master. And so here it has a quietude, it has a kind of a magnitude, I guess. And it also, of course, has the, a greater sense of autonomy because it's on a monochromatic background. So um, it was a... Uh, a, a risk that we took, which has hopefully been justified. Mm -hmm. I think lastly, um, we must touch again on the different guests in the exhibition that you've kind of invited and selected to the show. So first of all, there's a painting by Edouard Fouillard, 
and secondly, um, a film by the choreographer and dancer Michael Clark. Perhaps you could um, talk about why you've selected these two artists. My premise was that um, a, it would be interesting to have a, um, a French artist from another time, uh, counterpointed by a London-based artist mm -hmm. still, still working, and Michael for me is very London. So I think that was just the axis for me. Mm -hmm. London, London and Paris and uh, uh, tw 19th, well, 20th century uh, and 21st century. So it's a kind of time base. But it's also the case that he was very struck by the sunsets of the uh, rehearsal studios, which play a part in the edit.